Are you all looking at Team Malaysia getting psyched up? We have around about 70,000 people in Expo 2020 tonight. This venue is buzzing. Now, as I mentioned to you, if you're not familiar with what Expo, Ex Expo 2020 is all about, it is a cultural event, it's a fun event, it's live action, it's sports, it's superstars. The size of 660 US soccer fields, it is absolutely huge. And now we're going to concentrate on the world's best, the world's best bowlers, and in this case, the women. Tom, USA up on the lane first. Danielle McEwen, major champion. One of the most focused players you'll ever see. That's that's called splitting the eight nine right there. The eight nine pins, the ball, watch the ball go right through the two back pins in the middle, in the middle of the deck on the back row. Watch how this ball splits them. Yep. That's called a perfect strike. That is the perfect strike. Well, there you go. I'm learning more things as we go along. And the man who's uh, been involved in professional bowling all over the world uh, is the man to call it with me tonight. Uh, team Malaysia, of course, uh, up for their shot. The Malaysian Tigers. Well, there we go. Oh. Ball now, a little high. It, it, just a little high. We've got, there you go, that's a great shot. Just as I was about to say, top left of your screen, there's the Malaysian team supporters in their Tiger outfits. And uh, we had uh, a Tiger being held up earlier on. It was probably all of about uh, two inches long and two inches high. Not the biggest Tiger. Next time we'll work on the Tiger size, methinks. But, <laughs> but we're looking at, of course, Team USA. Now, that lady there with that little uh, cell phone, she won a t-shirt earlier on, of course, for her support for Team USA. And of course, the spare for Malaysia as we get up to fever pitch in these World Championships final. Tom, we're in the finals now. We're starting the last day of the event. What's it been like for you over these last, well, not just four days here in the finals in Expo 2020, but since you started yeah. on the 6th of November at the Dubai Bowling Center? It's just an incredible festival of this game and with so much riding on it for all these players and these countries and nations and everything riding on it, not just for them, but for the sport itself. I mean, people that love bowling, love this event, want it to succeed so this bowling can, so that bowling can reach new heights. And I think what we've seen is so many unusual uh, for the sport pictures and highlights and videos and moments that will live forever and it's because of this unique setting and uh, really just how they've all come together for a new type of format in this event and we've seen just so much excitement but I'll tell you right now the one event they all want to win the most is this one the team event oh oh I knew that was coming you knew it was coming you knew it was coming now, Tom, you just mentioned there that everybody wants to win this event. What is special for all of our new viewers? And we are attracting thousands of new viewers to yeah. the, the sport of bowling. Tell us why this is so special. Well, you know, these players in, in most competition that, they, that they're in, it's individual competition. But in this, they're representing their country above all else. And this is the ultimate team competition because every player on the team works together to complete these scores and works together to win this gold medal. So winning together and being the ultimate nation that wins the gold medal in both the women's and the men's uh, has always been the, the number one goal. It's putting team before self. And that is a great sentiment, and that's what it's about. And, of course, with the mixed teams that we've got coming up later on in their finals, all about equality, all about involving everybody at all grassroots levels, and everybody is welcome to the IBF World Championships and, of course, uh, Tour Commissioner of the PBA, Tom Clark, great words there. And of course, America getting the uh, Team USA getting that spare there. So this venue here, very, very special indeed. This is the Sports Fitness and Wellness Hub. Now, in the very centre of the screen there is a bicycle hub rack. You can see that there. This is part and parcel of um, Expo 2020 Dubai. You can take bike trips around the park. It's so big, it's so huge. 
Um, this is going to be here for six months. It is a purpose-built venue that will be repurposed as a city hmm. after Expo 2020 finishes. This is going to be a brand new city, wow. um, an eco and smart city. There'll be no cars and vehicles allowed generally around the hub itself. It'll all be done sustainably, all about mobility. There's a new metro system that's been built here, designed around sports, fitness, well-being, and of course, a brighter future. And this is the perfect home, not only for Expo 2020, but the new world format of IBF Bowling. It couldn't be in better hands, Tom, could it really? <laughs> you just said it, you said it great. I have, I have really enjoyed touring the grounds here for this, uh, I keep calling it the World's the Fair because when well, I was growing up, yeah, it was the World's it used Fair. To be. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so I've, I've toured, you know, so many different countries that have incredible displays here, and uh, um, you know, it's an, it's an incredible experience. So I'm really happy to be here. Wow, big strike and. Shit. I'm going to give you a little Jordan tip, Tom. I don't know if you've been to one yet. We'll get back into the main bowling. If you get a chance to go to the Saudi Arabia Pavilion, um, it is uh, the major, major tour effect for me, uh, hosting a TV show about this wonderful venue. It's one of them. Have you been there yet? I, no, I walked by it, but I didn't go in. It yeah. is an immersive, all-encompassing performance and a spectacle, much like what we're seeing here with the bowling. But it is something to go and behold. Uh, check um, it out. Yeah, yeah, have a look. And, of course, talking about being immersive. I liked uh, Italy because because they have the best food. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, that's the thing. That is the thing here. Food, uh, sustenance, uh, refreshments, shall we say, of all sorts are available here in Dubai. I was telling to, uh, talking to Matt Canazzaro earlier on, there is a hub here for food. You know, we could sit here now and how smart this city will be. We can order our favorite food and it'll be delivered by an electric scooter. Is that right? Via a Google pin to anywhere on this site that you'd like. <laughs> I've told you on day four now, it's a bit too late, I'm sure. <laughs> I should have told you on day one. <laughs> I saw something today in a mall here in Dubai that I've never seen before called a robot cafe. Yeah, you yeah, seen one of yeah, those? yeah, I have. Oh, I took amazing. my son to an ice cream robot cafe where they Neat. mix the ice cream flavors together and they bring it to your table. <laughs> it's crazy, here's, isn't here's it? Here's Danielle's second time around. She comes up light, 2-8. Uh, you know, so traditionally, this team event has been a five-player team. Now we're at four and the rhythm of who bowls what frames is different in that case. Normally in a, in a five player Baker match, each player bowls one, two, three, four, five, and then they repeat six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we have the leadoff bowler bowling one and now five. So, this, if I'm not mistaken, you'll be there. This is Kelly Hewlett coming in. No, oh, that was Danielle McEwen, Sorry, Danielle and she McEwen. just missed that. Yes. that. That changes the complexion of this match because now they have 97 in the fifth, and uh, Malaysia, with a strike, will take the lead. Oh, that look of not despair, but just. You no, she, she wants to make that spare. Yeah. That, that's a spare she counts on making, and, and she's gonna, she needs to get over it, though, and get, because she's going to be an important player in the rest of this match. Coming in. We couldn't capitalize. So what we have right now is if, if she makes, if, if the Malaysian uh, converts this 6-10 spare, we'll have a tie match. Wow, and uh, you are the king of tied matches, kind of. Uh, the <laughs> last <laughs> night was last exciting. Last night, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever witnessed that. There's the Team Malaysia supporters. There's the Tigers. Um, they are, oh, there we go, Team Malaysia. <laughs> yes, we love you, and we love, of course, I Team I see you. Rafiq Ismail up there. Rafiq came over in bold PBA events. He's an exciting player. Really? Oh, yeah, left-handed fireball. We call him the rocket. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's been, you know, from the, uh, it's not the Far East, but, you know, the middle of the East and Far East, there's been some exciting, on oh, there is, and are some exciting bowlers coming through onto the scenes. And this format, this championships, and again, I'm not kind of, over egging it is a great way that we can experience and see and witness bowlers that we don't normally get to see. Kelly Kulik, the, the only woman to win a major championship on the PBA Tour. <laughs> ten pin. That ten pins have been a sticking spot tonight here on the lanes. Kelly's getting her first crack at these lanes here tonight. 
I know she was here early to get as, as early a chance on them as she could. It was still the sun was shining bright when they had their first practice session today. And now it's for all the marbles. She makes it. It's great spare there. Okay. Yeah, you're right. When they were warming up today, the sun was out. It was really hot. It was sunglasses weather, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was very warm yes. here in Dubai. Um, we've talked a lot about this, uh, Tom, about the, 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 the lanes and the conditions. I hadn't witnessed the guys playing on the lanes in, in, the, in the, not full heat of the sun, but pretty strong heat of the sun. How, how with, with perspiration, and, and how, how hard is it to kind of egg yourself into these lanes when, when it's, the conditions are like that? Is, it, is, it, is there any downside to that, or is it just something else you've got to overcome? It's another thing to overcome. I think the number one concern that they have is the approach. Okay. And the approach when there's high humidity, even when you're in a bowling center, uh, it becomes stickier, and, and a player's ability to slide comfortably is so key to their form and their, and their delivery that that's their number one concern. What I've seen is I feel like everybody is comfortable out there at this point, so that's not a concern. So from that point on, there really isn't any other anything different. It's, it's different, but the way that these players focus, if their slide's okay, they're going to be all right. Well, they seem to, you know, from the early stages, it was kind of everybody getting to look at it, everything get a bit different, but now everybody's kind of bedded into this format. They're used to it. It's become their home over the last four days and probably sad to see it go after tonight's <laughs> bowling action. Ooh, that is going to be a big shot. The two, just wide of the... Just two, wide four, of the, yeah. ten. And one fourteen in the sixth for the U.S., that's... Missy Parkin, um, who is another one that's crossed over into competing against the men. She was the first woman to actually join the PBA when the PBA opened its membership to women. She was the first one. When she competed in college, she was on her college team's men's team. Really? And she was the best bowler on that team. <laughs> I bet the guys <laughs> love that, didn't they? <laughs> oh, they wanted her. Any, everybody wanted her on their team. She is uh, one of the great players in the history of the game. But that frame is open the door for Malaysia. And if Malaysia can fill in the seventh frame, they're going to take the lead. Now, just to remind you, unlike the semifinals, this is a race to two. So, of course, uh, the USA will have a chance to come back if it is deemed that they will be going one down. Great point. That was buried, and they've taken the lead. That was it. Malaysia was takes the lead in the seventh frame, so now we're down to the final three. And we have a lead change, and Malaysia leads by 14. And that's what you just heard on our uh, commentary speakers there. Yeah, Malaysia leading by 14, I believe, is, was the call in the uh, in the hub here. And of course, that sees them go ahead. But of course, nothing, it's not all lost. Team USA, here we go. Ball got wide. For a minute there, I thought it, didn't grip, it was did on it? purpose. Yeah, I, I actually thought maybe she moved out for a reason. But I was surprised, but I think she just missed and missed right, and so it missed the head. We've seen a couple of these in the, in the last like three or four shots that the, these either haven't gripped or they've missed shots that you kind of suppose would normally expect them to. Yeah, some of those balls bury. were coming back earlier. Yeah, they were. They were really biting hard and coming back. Maybe of course this, uh, the lanes have been re-oiled just a moment ago. So that and many times, many times over the last few days. Yeah. With every re-oil, oh, and that's a huge miss too. So with every re-oil, um, the lane is not just oiled by the machine, the lane is cleaned by the machine. When you continually clean a lane, continually oil it and then clean it again, it's really impossible to have the exact same condition game after game after game. That, well, that is a, that's a professional strike right there because when your opponent goes down with two misses like that in a row Malaysia and you're on a strike and you can double like Malaysia just did, that's like a hammer on a down. That that's like is. putting your foot down on somebody who's wounded. And so Malaysia just took commanding lead in this game. Right now, I think what you're seeing is the U.S. just trying to line up. For the next game. Yeah. 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 They yeah. Get it. It, it seems to be, I think it definitely is, it's, it's, it's the, the bite has got out of the, the, the lane. Uh, the Tigers of, of course, Malaysia are 
forming a formidable force in this game. But as we saw it last night in, in, in a lot of the games, in, in the US game as well, you know, US down, they came back and they won. It's not all over in the course. It's just a case of refocusing now. It's kind of re, you know, centering your thoughts, keeping your concentration. It's really a, a, a beautiful format for a fan because the fan knows, all right, Malaysia's up one nothing. But this next game will decide whether or not we're going to go to an exciting ninth and tenth frame roll off if the USA can win. Malaysia's got to prove it one more time, win the second game to just end this thing. But it gives the fans the, the, the feeling that there's so much urgency on the next game, knowing that Malaysia can win it and the USA must win to force a roll off. Now, just give you a heads up, of course, lots of more to come here tonight. There's the World Championships. The IBF World Championships comes to its crescendo, the final stages of the World Championships. And we're going to be seeing the men's final coming up after this match. Singapore taking on Korea. And then after that, we have Sweden versus Team USA and the mixed team event, of course, bringing the curtain down on what has been an amazing event in Dubai and keeps giving to the bowlers and, of course, the viewing public around the world, the opportunity to see bowling in a whole new form. We, you know, we, you know, we, I tend to look ahead and and assume that these great players are going to fill frames. But if Malaysia misses this spare, it's not over. This game is not completely over. She makes this spare. It likely is. She had bad footing. Yeah, she missed slipped. them all. And so what we have slipped. is one, 162. We got 170 from Malaysia in the ninth. If the USA strikes out in the 10th, they can shoot 181 and force Malaysia to mark in the 10th frame. So this game is not over. Well, there you go, Tom Clark giving his expert view on what we're about to see here. Can it grip again? It did. It, this time it did grip, Tom. This time it held and came in with a great strike there. It ain't over, as they say. PBA Tour Commissioner Tom Clark alongside me in commentary tonight in these finals. And we've had a whole host of uh, great uh, co-commentators through these last four days. And of course, Tom is no exception. Knows the uh, US team inside out. And as he was telling me the other day, actually, that um, you know, living in Switzerland these days, you can't be too biased about all, <laughs> all the players that you see. But we're looking at two Big strike. Oh. Oh. oh! And now the best she can do, the best the USA can do after that shot is 171. And that means Malaysia needs two pins in the 10th frame to win the game. So, okay. Uh, it, it, it's over, unless Malaysia uh, has really, really bad footing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably but, uh, the worst footing we've ever seen in the history is, of bowling. Is, I, you know, I've, I've been in and out and not been able to watch every single match, but I think this might be one of the lowest scoring matches yeah. I've seen. How about you? Um, in my, yes, I mean, going back to all the games we've seen, it's, it's kind of lacking, definitely lacking in the amount of strikes. We, we, myself and uh, Matt Canazzaro earlier on, we, uh, we, kind of, we were commentating on a game that was lacking and devoid of, of strikes, but then literally powered up in the second half. But uh, this one, again. 170 is a low score. That, you know, that last shot, she, uh, Danielle was practicing for the next game, looking at her strike line. She wasn't trying to make that spare. And that's 170 for the USA, which is exactly what Malaysia has now. So they just need to show up on this shot and win the first game and then force a, uh, a do or die for the USA in game two. In the history of pro bowling, Tom, has anybody ever missed with two balls, gone down the gutter? Or, gutter? Yeah, I, yeah, I, you know, I got it twice. <laughs> has comes it ever to happened? Mind. <laughs> and the only reason I can laugh is because uh, he's a good friend of mine uh, who's one of the greatest bowlers of all time, Marshall Holman. Okay. He there, yeah, it happened. And he did it, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> he was playing yeah. far outside. Hey! That's when you kind of... Um, <laughs> Look for someone to bury your head, a, yeah? There's been a few gutter balls in the history of the PBA, and, and including uh, in a 10th frame situation where a player needed uh, six, and really all they needed to do was hit the pins and win a, win a title yeah. and threw it into the gutter and lost. And, and so, you know... <laughs> you, 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 one, know you shouldn't laugh, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, one of, the, one of the great things about bowling is that anything can happen. 
I mean, it's just true. You know, anything can happen at any time, and it, it makes it thrilling to watch for any fan. I mean, that's why it's fun to bowl. <laughs> anything can happen each shot you throw. You can get a bad break, a good break. And Malaysia's gonna, gonna you know, work on this fill ball as well to uh, to uh, continue to to dial in this this lane because while the USA shot 170 that game. They would call it zero. Or anything. Yeah, I, I, we go. I think they're telling us that yeah. they're telling us that Malaysia took a little, a little bit too much extra time before that shot, and the tournament director, uh, Kirk von Kruger, gave her a warning. Okay, to uh, continue to uh, to do that. Okay, well there you go. That's the hot off the press news from the IBF World Championships, and of course uh, uh, adjudicated by and followed up on it. And of course we've got screens all over the place, and of course making sure that everything is fair and above board for all teams and all players. At the home of Expo 2020 Dubai, it's the new home for the IBF World Championships, and of course the teams are looking course to proceed through to the next game so at the moment yeah and you've got two you've got two of the great teams in the history of bowling you know uh, Malaysia has won this team event in 2017 that's the last time they've won it and the USA women last won this event in Abu Dhabi in 2015 so so just getting confirmation um, of that score Malaysia are one up and of course, if they see this game through, they're in. And of course, they are in the position of being the new world championship. But will the USA, Team USA, come back? Malaysia starting well. Malaysia out to a, out to a quick start. USA knows their backs are against the wall. Got to win this game to force a roll off. The class of this USA team is so strong that one thing uh, they will not they will not be too nervous. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. They've been here before. They, I was just about to say that. With the yeah. experience that you've got in the team, they have. There's probably not much that they haven't experienced. Correct. The only thing that will make them nervous is a bad ball reaction. Yep. And right now, it appears they have bad ball reaction, and that means the ball just isn't singing through those pins. Mm -hmm. It's not driving through. Remember the first shot the first we shot saw? You said was the perfect Danielle strike. McEwen, yeah. She threw a perfect shot, and ever since then, well, they actually had the first two, and then ever since then, something has gone amiss, and, and they're just not hitting the pocket with the same drive. Ten pins coming up light. Get back on the ball with the spare made. Yes, Kelly there we covers. go. That's a good consolation for so Team USA. And USA changed the lineup and went with Kelly Kulik first instead of Danielle. And that's a strategy move by the US. Remember what Korea did mm -hmm. last night in yep. game two? So yep. Changed their lineup dramatically and it worked for them to force a roll up. Ooh, big split by Malaysia. That's an opening. That's almost impossible spare to convert. So the U.S. sees that as a chance to take the lead. So they've already obviously realized that that is obviously what's happened on the uh, lane on their left-hand side. So then you'll, I suppose, as always, you're going for a strike on every ball that you bowl. But uh, the, uh, the U.S. team now, there's, there's somebody's left the door open a little bit for them here. Absolutely. You always want to fill the frame. If you, if you don't fill a frame in a short one-game match like this with this level of competition, you're, you're just putting yourself in danger. And as soon as she left this wide open split for Malaysia, she gave the USA hope that they can take the lead in the second frame, okay. early lead. <laughs> Any mark here will, will give the US a, a, at least a 10 pin lead. And it's still early in the game, but you'd rather bowl from the front. Tight and strong. Remember, jo remember Jordan uh, missed right, and that time she said, "I'm not missing right. If oh, anything, I'm going to miss left." But she kept, but it stayed on line. And she tripped that four nine, and she'll take it. Trust me. <laughs> there she goes. She, there she goes. She's happy with that. 
Um, so tell us a little bit about the, the US team, uh, Tom. I mean, how long have they been established in the format that they are now in, in, in the team together that the girls were looking at? They've been together for a while. Well, they have a, uh, they have a great another split from Malaysia. Uh, they've been together for this year. They had a great training uh, earlier this year in Arlington, which is where the uh, International Training Center is. The USBC has a great campus in Texas in the United States, and they bring all the Team USA players together. They get together, get to know each other even better. But these women compete against each other on the PWBA Tour, so they know each other as opponents. They know each other as teammates. They've grown up knowing about each other because they're all so skilled and, and at the top of the game. So they have so much familiarity with each other's games. Then they have great coaching uh, with Brian O'Keefe and they have uh, Kendrick Gaines here with them. And those coaches know their games completely. Uh, and, it, and the same exact, uh, the same, oh, a bit from the outside, that's kind of a lucky way to make that spare. She meant to split, split them most likely, but she made that spare from the outside, which is kind of luck. But Malaysia, Malaysia has a great team Malaysia uh, concept as well, and they get together and, com and practice frequently and have incredible coaching. Malaysia is one of the top bowling nations in the world. Back to Team USA as they, is it going to go again? Missy Just tried to trip the 4-9 as well, and <laughs> she didn't get the same break. So the action continues way into the night here in Dubai. There it is. That is the view of the Sports Fitness and Wellness Hub here at Expo 2020. We're going to stay with the action all the way through to the end. Coming up next, the men's final. That will see Singapore take on Korea, and Korea were a powerhouse in their semi-final. But here's Team USA coming to fight back, to get back this game they need to draw level for a playoff in the uh, the decider for this World Championships, of course, the women's team event. USA by 12. That was the 2-8, and we've seen a lot of 2-8s crumble for on both the men's and women's side over all of these championship rounds. That one tried to. The uh, eight pin was not going down. <laughs> I like that. You know, yeah. I've always tell, I always try to teach kids. Actually, do not turn your back on those pins. You can stare them down. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that, that works. Does it? So that, you know yeah. what? As funny as it sounds, I actually believe it does. You have to stay focused on those pins and don't turn around. Pay attention. Watch the pin action, no matter what. And uh, and. It, it, and if you, the longer you stare, the better chance you have of knocking You're them down. Psyching the pins out. Is that, <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's, that's your right. that's your format. The I pins like are it. the pins are the true enemy in this game. <laughs> Danielle, so smooth, so smooth, and Danielle. buries another one. Up by 13. Danielle's another player that actually has competed on the PBA tour and very well. She's one of the few women who actually was on a PBA league uh, team. Um, and Kelly is another one that what that was, and Liz Johnson. Only three in the history of uh, the PBA League have, have had women on the uh, men's teams. So as we can currently see the scores, Ooh, uh, Malaysia are one up. Team USA are up in this game. But uh, Tom, what happens after that? So if USA pull it back, it's 1-1, and then we go to what? A ninth and tenth frame roll off. Okay. And if you were watching last night and saw USA Korea and the men's trios, you saw as exciting as bowling can get. Yeah, I, mean, I think both of us ended up with goosebumps. Oh, yeah, we and did. And it was around midnight. So it was. It was <laughs> the last time I had goosebumps around midnight, I don't, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a good decision not to get into that one. Right, <laughs> Malaysia, quickly moving on with a spare, Tom. <laughs> but it is, you know, listen, I have to say, we're laughing, we're enjoying it, we've had a great time. You know, but genuinely, everybody involved in the championships has been having fun, haven't they? It's, it's what it's all about, you know, professional sport is professional. You know, from our team of camera crews and directors and producers and everybody else, and even the not even the players, but as the players themselves, it's all been one big family, isn't it, really? You know, you know when, when you love a game and everyone involved with this event loves bowling, 
you immediately share that with everyone around you in that culture or in that community. And so they immediately, everyone in this event immediately starts with the understanding. You know, we all love bowling, yeah, and yeah. bowling's like, an inter, like a language. And so we all understand everything, the ups, the downs, what makes it difficult, what makes it exhilarating. And so you immediately have a connection and a bond, and that's what makes this international event so awesome. So America okay. making the Spurs team by USA. 14. They're up, up by 14. Up by 14, and that's what they needed to do. This is what they needed to do. But of course, Malaysia have still got an opportunity to uh, take this game. But America, as I say, they're up and they're in control. Oh, misses the head pin right at six. That's a washout. It's bad count. It's a difficult spare, and it could be the turning point of this match. It's a bad miss right. It certainly is. It certainly is. Six pins down with the four left up. So this is a, in bowling terms, Tom. How, how hard a shot is this? This washout, I'd probably put it at around. Uh, I probably put it at around 40 percent, 50 percent. Got to, you got to slide the, you have to hit the head pin on the left side. No, she hit it too flush yeah, too and she flush, wasn't yeah. able to throw it over. So now they only have 91 in the sixth and USA can strike for 100 in the fifth and have a hammer on it. This is the spot where you want somebody up that can smell blood in the water <laughs> and they're and they want to strike and they take it and they'll take a commanding lead. Remember Jordan came up a little bit high on her last shot. Oh. She went way high on that yeah, shot. Yeah, She's yeah. lucky to get seven. And now... You, you could see that happening, can't you, as yeah. the ball came down the lane. She doesn't look comfortable right now. Jordan looks like she missed right, and players don't want to miss right, especially one with... Jordan has some of the greatest power in, in the history of women's bowling. Uh, her hand release and her uh, revolutions that she puts on the bowling ball is uh, extreme power in the women's game. And so missing right uh, could could possibly have scared her into trying to pull the ball so she wouldn't do that again. Big cover, big well cover. Done. Well done, Team USA, and it keeps the game alive as we're looking at it now with both teams. So she's there, so 17, they're up, they're up by uh, 20, 26 right now and um, have a commanding lead, but these lanes look so touchy that nothing is safe. No, I know, I know, hey! it's kind of... They seem to play differently on, on different evenings than we've experienced it over the last four days. Yeah, just continual, uh, again, the, the cleaning and re-oiling of one pair of lanes this many times over a number of days is going to alter how the lanes play from the first time they were oiled. So we could be on the edge of an, a very... Missy answers it back. Well He's getting excited, Tom, next to me now. This is Team USA. Nail another strike. Great shot there. Look at that. <laughs> She's happy. She's happy indeed. She has, Missy uh, has one of the great smiles in this sport. <laughs> Malaysia trying to double, misses the head misses pin the again. Head again yeah, I, you know. I don't know. I, I, I tend to predict a little too early in these games, but I think we're going to a ninth and tenth I, roll, listen, frame roll off. Listen, I, I've been calling it. I've, I've, I've called it badly on a couple of occasions. Being a novice, I get away with it. <laughs> sure. But I, I, I think, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I'm going with you, Tom. I'm going. I think this could be a roll off. And I think we could be seeing another exciting. Now, what happens with the roll off? Do they choose? How do you choose lanes? How does that work? They'll stay in the same lane. Okay. But the choice that's interesting is who will throw the ninth and the tenth frame. Okay. And that comes down to the coach for each team deciding who's got the best look and can give us the best chance to strike. Well, that was going to be a question I asked, I was going to ask you earlier on, but we, uh, we got way late with what was happening on the lanes, is that how important is a coach to oh, a the, team yeah. in these events? Well, the lineup is really the most critical part of this Baker format, which means it was devised by someone named Baker. That's yeah. why it's called Baker. And and what it means is you're, you're a group of players combining your shots to create one game score. Danielle's gonna end this thing because we're going to a roll off. 
And and so the coach is deciding who's going to bowl the first frame, who's going to bowl the second frame. And you're constantly looking for chances to double. So you're saying, who's the player with the best look? And how can we follow that with someone with a good look to be able to combine strikes in a string, which is the key to scoring high in bowling? <laughs> You're really, you're really trying to, you're, if you identify the one player in your lineup that has the worst look, you're kind of trying to hide them in the lineup somewhere so that it doesn't impact what could be a strong string of strikes. But if the USA strikes here, this match is going to be over. The best Malaysia can do is 191. The USA will have 147 in the seventh. Now, as we've seen in other games, uh, Tom, and other matches where there are balls remaining to bowl, if um, the U.S. continue on this and it's, it's an unassailable lead, do the the uh, Malaysian team carry on with their extra bowls until we get to the ninth and tenth? Uh, yes, and, the, and they'll use that time to gain knowledge. That's yeah. the big one. There you go. So 147 in the seventh. At the least, they have 175, 190, uh, 2 0. So, the, at, at the least, USA is going to go 2 0. And Malaysia, the best they can do is 191. So, okay. we're getting ready to, to get. Where's my seatbelt? We your need seat a seatbelt. Strap this man we in. We, we've got excitement here. He's about to launch. And mind you, if Jeff Bezos was here, he'd be taking you up on a rocket somewhere, Tom. <laughs> and I'll tell you again. And I, of course, I. I Bit, I'm the commissioner of the PBA, and we, we kind of, you know, introduced this uh, race to two format to wide audiences in the last few years. Yeah. And it's really exciting because you split these games and you come to a ninth and tenth, and uh, the players might say it's too exciting. <laughs> it's a little too much well, pressure and too I fast. I don't think but if you asked like Dave Johnson last night um, about if yeah. he found it too exciting. When you win, you love it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this man has been walking around with a medal in his pocket. He was... Um, you know, the, uh, uh, in fact, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, he was going to be joining us in the commentary booth tonight, but uh, the ladies, the U.S. ladies team, asked him for good luck to be behind them right? as they bowl. So AJ will be uh, up and around the, uh, sure. the, the ladies. And they wanted him to be there as a good luck a token from last night. Yeah, both teams have great support and great men's teams as well, and they can lend a lot of advice. They know about the equipment, selections that could be made they know how these lanes play and they can help the women line up and believe me everybody wants to share knowledge when you're part of a team and every little bit you can pick up can just help just enough so you can carry those 10. so malaysia now it was their turn to shoot 171 like usa shot 170 in that first game the usa is looks pretty lined up right now i mean uh, you know, they're going to throw a big game here and be the favorites now heading into that ninth and tenth. I think Kelly uh, is the player that I'm going to expect to throw the tenth frame. That's what, the one you're going to call, is it? I, I, was, yeah. I would put, if I was the coach of USA and I had Kelly Kulik on my team, I'd put her anchor. You, I'd put her anchor. I'd put her in, in that spot to make that big shot to win a gold medal. Uh, and it looks like they put her in that spot in this game to, to shoot, to, to make all the most important shots in this game. That was the strategy by the Team USA's coaching. So they're going to shoot one night uh, with this spare. They're going to they're going to bowl uh, 216 this game with a strike by Kelly here. And uh, we're going to we're going to strap in. We are getting ready for the final stages of the first of the finals on the last night of the IBF World Championships in Dubai 2021. Of course, the ladies, the women's final is at a knife's edge. Malaysia, USA, Malaysia went up one. USA have done everything and they are back. And we will be seeing the roll off which will be coming up in a couple of moments' time. But, of course, just finish off the last few seconds, getting the, uh, the eye dialed in. 215 for the U.S. Now the, big, now, the, now the big reveal will be what's the lineup. 
uh, it's anybody's guess. I don't think anybody has. So, so this is the coach, the Brian O'Keefe. His wife, by the Let's way, Shannon O'Keefe, is one of the great bowlers in, <laughs> in USA bowl and women's bowling history. She's won many gold medals for Team USA. That was what I was going to ask you, actually, Tom. You know, obviously bowlers are on the road all the time. Do bowlers marry bowlers? Do, they, is do. It, they, they do. do. <laughs> they do. You'd have That's to, really, wouldn't you? There's a lot of relationships within the game of people that, uh, uh, and there's, there's some classic uh, uh, greats of the game that uh, on both the men and women's side that, that marry and their kids have a lot of pressure. <laughs> I bet they do. Because if they're not the best ever. No. It also, on the, uh, on the other side of it, if anything happens in a relationship, it could be quite awkward when you're on the, on the tour and your, uh, your ex-wife or husband is there That's bowling true. on another lane. That could be quite fun. Absolutely. <laughs> I've seen some of that, but we're not going to talk about that either. We're all positive. We're <laughs> yeah. all positive here in Dubai. This is what it's all about. So, Okay, we got Tom, USA, Malaysia. Set the scene because this is where it's going to count. We are about about to find out who are going to be the world champions you know. and of course it's all about that particular moment we are just waiting to see the calls and what's about to happen and we'll let you know as soon as we do Oops. Kelly's going first oh and she buried it so she went in the ninth frame which is not what I said I thought she'd go tenth frame and she goes ninth frame they have to switch right She looks happy yeah. with that one, Tom. She's, She's thrown a lot of big shots in her life, but believe me, that's one of the biggest. Because this is for a gold medal. So this young lady from Malaysia has been, the, I think, the strongest player for their team. So pressure on. She's going to make her part. She winds on it, mixes them up, and Ooh. can't shake the ten. Ooh. USA that takes the lead. Being a pin that doesn't want to go down tonight, that that's particular one. A 10 pin is the the pin that bowlers hate the most. And um, now and, and now you have to you have to immediately get over the fact you didn't carry that pin. Yep. And now you've got to make it. And the great professional bowlers are over 90% on the spare, but nobody wants to have to make the 10 pin in the most critical <laughs> time. So if she makes the spare, it's it just shows you the focus that she has easily easily easy straight flush into and the middle she's of the not, pin. she she shows you right there that she doesn't let nerves bother her at all she's so practiced and so professional that put something up there that i have to do i can do it now danielle is going to throw the tenth and uh danielle McEwen, remember to start the competition was the leadoff player <laughs> Comes up high and luckily does not leave the 4-10. Instead, only the 4-pin. But that means no matter what she does, if she spares and strikes in her fill ball, she will have 40. And that and Malaysia will be able to get up in the 10th and win the gold medal. No matter what Danielle McEwen does here. She needs to convert this and then fill it for 40. Well. We are on the edge of our seats again. You call it, Tom. Let's have a look. If she if she strikes for 40, then Malaysia must strike on their first shot in the 10th frame to have a to have a chance to either win or tie. If they tie, they go to another ninth and tenth frame roll off. Oh my goodness me! Okay, so Danielle needs the strike to make all of that happen that we just talked about. Let's see what's happening. Let's start for that equation. So there's AJ, it's I big, talked to you about big it. big fill ball, this is a big fill ball. Yeah, AJ back there. He's back in the, behind the girls. <laughs> 10, 40, 40 for the US. Now Malaysia, if they get nine on this ball, the most that they can at nine on their first ball, the most that they can shoot is 39. So they must strike on this first ball. So if this is not a strike, US. the US yeah. are the champions. Keep your eye on them. Right, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. If Malaysia do not strike this ball, the USA will be the world champions. They don't do it. There it is, Team are USA they? are the world champions, the women's team champions, and there you have it. 
Tom Clark, the PBA Tour Commissioner, right next to me, called it. And there you have the gold medal winners and the brand new IBF World Champions of 2021, Team USA. And Tom, there's a big <laughs> smile on your face. You're well, going to have to stay here for every US game, I'm you know not, that. I feel bad about that a little bit. <laughs> but every time I'm here, the US wins a gold medal. But I'll tell you, those women, I know them all personally. They're very nice people as well as great competitors. And I know that they had a trying week this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things did not go their way every single day. It was hard to get onto the shows, let alone they win medals. And they had a lot of letdowns. And so to see them in the ultimate event for them in Dubai here for this world championship, to win the team gold, team you have to feel good for them. Medal. Malaysia, Malaysia last won this thing just a few years ago. They'll be back. They seem to just reload with great players. And so, uh, you know, these rivalries that we've seen the last two nights, U.S.-Korea, U.S.-Malaysia, that's what defines international bowling. That's what defines the IBF. And uh, I'm really happy just to be here for it and <laughs> to share it with it. you. Listen, oh. guys, if you can see the smile on this man's face, the Tour Commissioner, the PBA Tour Commissioner, Tom Clark, he has given us a great insight into what we have just witnessed. The new world champions, they are there, Team USA. He was in the seat next to me last night when they won. The girls are emotional. And as I said to you, just before this match started, AJ Johnson was going to be sitting next to me, giving me co-commentary. But he said to me, Lee, we have had a quick chat with the girls have asked me if I could be behind them to bring them luck. And he did. Look at this. Here's the final score in the playoffs. Of course, Team USA 2-1. They are the winners. And, of course, will be the gold medal holders on the World Champions of 2021. Now we will get the lanes re-oiled and we're going to be right back here with the, the final sorry, of the men's team championships where we're going to be seeing Singapore and Korea. But, but of course, before we go on to that match, we've got the medal ceremony to come. And join us back here in Dubai with the medal ceremony on the lanes here at the Expo 2020.